Okay, this might be the longest intro I done for now, but before this begin, first, the last video was met with very good reception. That's why I'm following it up with this video. So yeah, thank you for you guys support so much on that video. And I will try to take your feedback and improve my video quality for you guys to enjoy. And second, I won't be covering Project Nexus in these Madness Combat retrospective video. I know, I'm sorry, most of you might have wanted me to do that. But unfortunately, I can't figure out where to place Project Nexus in the timeline. And due to some inconsistent too. So I decided to keep it simple and only cover the canon animation. I might cover Project Nexus as a separate series in the future. And also, because we talk about Jebus, who is Madness Combat version of Jesus Christ, there's gonna be some discussion related to religion in the video. Anyways, let's get back to our main topic. Jesus Christ, aka Jebus, or Jeb for short, is a tertiary antagonist in Madness Combat. He's the first reoccurring character in the series. In almost every appearance of his, he's always fighting against the madness that has been brought on to Nevada, like Hank J. Wimbledon, Tricky, and the Auditor, sporting a halo that seems to grant him the power to be able to restore peace to Nevada. But if we want to tell his story correctly, we need to start from the beginning. In the first installment, like Hank, Jeb doesn't have much things going on. All we know is that Jeb seems to be on the peace side, trying to stop Hank's massacre to escalate any further. His power set is on display here, with reanimation, bulletproof shield, teleportation, and summoning weapons. So, with all of these power under his belt, Hank still managed to shoot him, killing him for the first time. In the second installment, Jeb first appeared briefly in the first room of the sheriff building, following Hank to try and stop his madness. He let a catch up with Hank and revived the dead bodies to eliminate Hank, but retreat soon after seeing that is ineffective. So, Hank might have thought that Jeb has given up on trying to follow him. We would later have seen that Jeb is still following Hank, now with a pistol, to instantly kill Hank at a more long range. Which Hank in the perfect spot for Jeb, he managed to shoot Hank in the head while he was distracted, killing Hank for the first time. This episode gave us a glimpse on some of Jeb's character traits, the first being his tactical skills, with him knowing when to retreat and adapt it for when the second time come. Second is his preference in high caliber firearms for more accuracy in his fights and to take down his opponent instantly which contribute to his third trait, that is, him disliking the madness in Nevada. He always tried to end his fight quickly, that's why he used high caliber firearm to shoot his opponent, due to its significant amount of energy upon impact, increased precision, and for his own protection. So, Jeb might have thought this was over. Hank was given a second chance at life. Hearing beside Sheriff in this third installment, the Sheriff would activate something that would be a big problem for a peace-loving individual like Jeb, which is the improbability drive, but that thing would be more important in the future. Jeb would later appear again to eliminate Hank by reanimating the dead once more. After Hank finished dealing with the zombies, Jeb pushes him through a wall before trying to use the dead to kill Hank again. Then, Jeb tried to sneak attack Hank with his binary sword, which right now has no binary. But this once again shows more of Jeb's fighting style, where he tried to sneak attack and finish the target immediately, instead of getting involved and making the fight more drawn out and messier, before getting shot by Hank and retreat. 
Jeb would later appear, once again attacking Hank from behind by stabbing Hank in the stomach, seemingly trying to hit his vital organs by shoving it deeper to try and providing him a quick death. But instead, Hank is able to carry on and blow Jeb frontal lobe off, killing him the second time and successfully killing the sheriff. But Hank's not able to carry it on for so long before succumbing to his wounds by Jeb, killing Hank the third time. Before his actual appearance in the episode, Jebus seemed to be referenced in one of the posters on the wall, named The Passion of Madness. That it seems to be a movie basing on Jeb, who is Madness Combat's universe, Jesus Christ. This poster seems to serve as a parallel between Jesus Christ in the real world and Jebus in Madness Combat. Due to this poster being a reference to a movie called The Passion of Christ, which based on four gospel narratives of Christ's passion. But before we get any further in this, I just want to say that if I say something wrong about this stuff, then I apologize, cause I'm not a Christian myself. And I want you viewers watching this to know that if I accidentally say something wrong or disrespectful, then that is not my intention. And please educate me in the comments. Anyways, there isn't much parallel between Jebus and Jesus that I can find from researching about the gospel content. Only one thing that I can found that could be considered a parallel between the two is the suffering that Jesus had to endure for humanity's redemption, where it could be said the same with Jeb, with him dying twice now from trying to stop Hank and prevent the madness from spreading. But this could very well be just an easter egg to the movie and not something deep to think about. Jeb would make an actual appearance later with the zombie of 1137 agent. Now with a stitched up face that seems to be provided by the halo or his own knitting skills, he then revived all the ravers Hank killed to try eliminate Hank. He almost succeeded in killing Hank but got blown up by Hank first, killing them both. Before we move on to episode 5, Jeb's binary sword now has a binary which translates to 316, referencing to verse John 316 in the Bible that said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This verse seemed to be recontextualized in the Madness Combat universe, as it seemed to be saying that anyone who follow Jeb's path of peace in Nevada will have eternal life, which might seem unlikely due to the madness in Nevada, but it actually proven true, with the prime example being the hot dog vendor guy, who doesn't try to get into any fight throughout the whole series and came out alive because of that. But yeah, Jeb got killed once more by Hank, making this the third time he died. Jeb is back once again, now with more stitches and bandages around his body. In the intro before his actual appearance, he was titled as a savior. This might be due to the fact that he seemed to be the only one person so far that are trying to rid the madness in Nevada without escalating it in the process. Later, he entered the room Hank was in after he revived all the dead agents as zombies. He then goes to battle Hank once more, deflecting his bullet and threatening Hank with his binary sword. He then follow Hank after he was trying to flee and engaging in a close quarter combat, managing to get a good slash in Hank's back and sap him off the cliff. Then, he goes to finish off Hank while he was unconscious, before he got hit by one of Hank's bullets, staggering Jeb for a little bit, allowing Hank to decimate all the undead agents before they both engage in close quarter combat once more. Later, when Jeb trying to confront Hank once more, Tricky appeared and ripped half of Jeb's face off, killing him the fourth time. This installment seemed to be establishing more of Jeb's current relationship with Hank, with how aggressive he fights in this one. Instead of trying to sneak attack or fight at a long range, it seems that Jeb is too fed up with Hank's action, that now he's trying to directly confront Hank and end him as soon as possible. Seeing how much Jeb was trying to close into Hank, with his binary sword. This might be a foreshadowing to Jeb's binary sword being the one to actually permanently kill Hank.
This episode only established Jeff's current relationship with AAHW after his fourth death by the hands of Tricky, which him angrily leaving a note saying, I quit. J for the auditor. The reason Jeff quit the AAHW might be a combination of other stuff before Tricky being the straw that broke the camel's back. Due to Jeff seeing that the auditor's way with the AAHW seems to not be doing any good for Nevada and only spilling more madness onto the world with the murder and destruction committed by the auditor via upgrading Tricky and activating more of the improbability drive onto Nevada. Thus, Jeff has enough and left the AAHW. Rebus made a cameo in this episode, showing what he been doing after he quit the AAHW, which is living peacefully, raking leaves, avoiding any conflicts with others. Interestingly, his halo is absent in this appearance of his. This might be due to him seeing the halo as the thing he used to cleanse Nevada from its madness, resulting in him seeing no use for it after he quit the AAHW and given up fighting. So it seems that Jeb has given up. The next episode would say otherwise. Nevis appear in the last stretch of Tricky and Hank's fight. After the last episode, Jeb might have thought about his decision of giving up, cleaning the madness of Nevada a bit more, coming to the conclusion that he should still try to do the cleaning, due to the threat that are poses by the auditor Hank and Tricky onto Nevada. Thus, after seeing that Hank and Tricky is still fighting, he gone back to his old tactics of waiting for a sneak attack. With Hank being thrown out of the building, staggering him for a little bit, Jeb saw this as the opportunity to kill Hank. So he jumped down the roof, shot down two engineers and a 1137 agent before stabbing Hank in the throat with binary sword. And this seems to be where the binary comes in, because this actually resulted in Hank's permanent death if he wasn't revived by the Mac Chamber, due to Hank not following the path of peace that Jeb is on. So it seems that the sword is only able to fatally wound Hank. So Jeb decided to just finish him off with a revolver so Hank won't suffer any longer, either from the injury that the sword made or the games that Tricky put Hank through. With the good night Hank might be referring to how Jeb is putting Hank to rest. The reason for the binary sword not killing Hank permanently too in Manus Combat 3 might be due to it still being early on in Hank's journey to madness, giving Hank the chance to redeem himself after he was revived once more. With Tricky following out to finish off Hank, Jeb shot Tricky's improbability drive, reverting the clown back to its normal state, before finishing off the clown with his binary sword via stabbing and cutting the clown multiple times in the head. A thorough look of Jeb's anger toward Tiki, while also it being quick and simple, showing Jeb's way of fighting and killing his opponent. After this, he's off to fight the one who is unleashing the madness, the thing he's been fighting against onto the world. This episode starred Jeb as the main protagonist and the auditor as the main antagonist, possibly paralleling these two to that of Jesus and the devil, coupled with the episode being named Inundation, which meant flooding, referring to the great flood that has been illustrated in the Bible. The episode starred with Jeb shooting his tech 50 with text popping on screen, the first being I Purge the Wicked, referring to Jeb killing Hank. Tricky and some of the AAHW members in the last episode. The second text being the impious madness must end, referring to his mission since the beginning of the series that is him trying to clean madness of Nevada, and his objective in this episode being him destroying the improbability drive and possibly killing the auditor. The third text said, I shall be the instrument of Armageddon, referring to as the battle between Jeb and the AHW being the last battle of good and evil, with Jeb being the one leading for the good side. The fourth text said, It has gotten out of hand, referring to the works of the auditor and the improbability drive, giving birth to Tricky and other crazy stuff in Nevada, with Jeb putting away his Tech 50 and pulling out his revolver. 
the text ended with the end has begun, referring to him putting the end to all of this madness. Jeff then jumped down and entered the AAHW building and fight through the members that resided here, showing more of his power, like telekinesis, and making people disappear. But while he was fighting, the other was trying to infect Jeb with something, possibly poisoning him, causing Jeb to vomit blood occasionally from this point on, before he continued to advance through the building. Jeb then come across a machine, assuming to be one of the control panels of the improbability drive, Jeb destroyed the machine before advancing to the next room. Jeff's tactical skills shine more with him, entering the elevator to see the upcoming floor and returning to the previous one after killing some nearby enemies and using the box to be his hiding spot for a sneak attack. Later, a Mac agent appeared to confront Jeff. Despite its massive size and its massive pistol, Jeff was able to easily take it down, then continue to advance through the building. After he reaches the end of the building, he pulled out his signature revolver and prepared to go fight the auditor face to face. Seeing the auditor from a far away building with a Gatling gun, the auditor started to fire the Gatling gun. So Jeff decided to charge towards the building with his flight ability, narrowingly dodges the Gatling bullet and crashing through the building walls. After he crashed, he instantly goes on to advance through the building to find the auditor, while also making through the members that reside here, and easily taking down another Mac agent. Later, he met the auditor, then the two began to fight, ending with the auditor retreating and Jeb summoning his binary sword, preparing to stab the auditor if it appears once more. Jeb then goes to the next room that has two members of the AAHW and one vendor, and Jeb only killed the member, showing that Jeb is only wanting to kill those who are directly associated with madness and not some bystander, hearkening back to the binary once more. With Jeb making it to the final control room of the auditor, Jeb was about to shut down the computer before the auditor appears once more and summoned AT4 to blow Jeb off the building. But with Jeb conjuring his bullet shield, it results in Jeb still being able to cling onto life and the machine being terminally damaged in the process, activating the morality restoration process to carry on Jeb's wish to return this world back to normal. With the sky cracking and a blue lightning strikes onto the building, the screen flashes white with text saying, and then there were none. In this installment, it confirmed Jeb being permanently dead due to the lightning strike. But the auditor survived and took the halo for itself, enhancing its own power. But it seems that Jeb's sacrifice was not for nothing due to it seems to greatly upset the auditor with its saying, so be it. The reason for this might be because the lightning destroyed the auditor's main facility and the primary improbability drive slowing down the auditor's plan even more. The lightning would then continue to appear with the auditor while wearing the halo, harming it in the process, as if Jeb's spirit still lives on with the halo and the normality restoration, trying to help the residents of Nevada going up against the auditor. Jeebus would later make a cameo appearing as a vision as the demo tried to touch a grunge body that looked eerily similar to Hank in Madness Combat 3, possibly implying that Jeb has made a mark on Hank's memories and conscience so much that he still appears in Hank's own head when someone tried to get into it. Jeebus is a very underrated main character compared to others in Menace Combat, due to being the only one to die permanently and never being revived. While he appeared in a lot of episodes, his appearance were mostly overshadowed by the other's main characters, like with Hank or the Auditor. But he still is a very good and unique character in the Menace Combat series, with character traits like these. One, his goal. Unlike most of the characters in the series, whose goal would be escalating the madness in the series in the process, Jeb's goal is to end the madness at all costs, and he would go to such great lengths to ensure that whether it's to end his enemies' lives quickly, or trying to not get the innocent lives wrapped up in the process, so the madness wouldn't escalate it any further. 
Second, his tactics. With the Hanks team being the prime example, most of the characters would try to fight their enemies head on or make their ambush very noticeable. Not Jeb. He's the master at sneak attack, as demonstrated with his three killings of Hank. Lastly, his impact on the series. Though he died before any other main characters, his impact still lingers. Like with his halo being the one to give Hank new hand and electrical powers to fight the auditor and the activation of the normality restoration which allowed Nevada one step closer to being back to normal and weakening the auditor's reign. After this video, I hope you might grow some appreciation for Jeb, the first reoccurring antagonist of the series, the only few who tried to restore Nevada back to normal, the first one to kill Hank, and the savior of madness combat. Hey guys, it's me asleep from the video just watched. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little weird, I'm sick while I try to make this video and I'm also sick right now but yeah hope you guys enjoy that even though it's a little shorter than the Hanks one and if you want me to cover other characters or other franchise in this type of video then you can comment down below and I might do it because you know you guys are my supporters and if you want to support me even more you can join the channel members in the link down below see y'all laters